Now, I started by closing the file that I had previously because I, I wanted to start with a clean slate. And over here on the left-hand side, now, yes, I could download a tree directory from Ancestry, and that's one of the features that everyone loves about Family Tree Maker. But I'm not testing direct downloads here. I'm, I'm testing GEDCOM. So I'm going to import an existing tree. And here it is showing me it can do it from version 5, from path, from path, from legacy family tree, or it assumes it's a GEDCOM. And it doesn't even ask me to pick one. It's going to know based on what's inside the program which one um, uh, it is. And uh, let, me, let me take a moment to show you why that is. Um, this is a sidebar. So I'm going to pull up my GEDCOM file, the one that I've been importing over and over again. And I'm going to edit it, open it up in Notepad. And I don't need it that wide. So remember from the video that each record starts with a line zero. So all of this is one record with sub-elements and it's a header record record and the valuable thing that it does is it lets you know uh, in the second row which character set it's using UTF-8, UTF-16, ASCII, uh, what have you uh, also um, what version now here it is uh, that should be, oh here's the version, version S of the GEDCOM uh, so it's 5.5 it's which means it's not 5.51, as well as the source, which is Ancestry.com Family Trees. Uh, the corporation is uh, Ancestry.com. So if this was exported from Roots Magic or exported from Legacy 9 uh, or any other program, that would be identified here. If you look at the ones that... Um, the Evidentia exports. Evidentia will be identified in this header as the source of that. Lewis is saying UTF-8 wasn't allowed in 5.5. Um, I've seen a lot of different character formats in uh, GEDCOM 5.5 files. Now, it could be that this is really a 5.5.1 and that um, Ancestry is just being uh, a little sloppy in, in identifying the version. Uh, it could also be that a lot of programs went ahead and supported UTF-8. The difference between ASCII and UTF-8 is, uh, at the very basics, is the ability to handle foreign characters. So if you've got anyone who wasn't British uh, or Irish or you know from the UK in your family tree and need one of those special characters you definitely want to export it in UTF all right so that's how, how it's going to know it's importing from ancestry that it's importing from ancestry and it's going to know from the file format that hey this is a GEDCOM so let's find it and import a name now it, it was I was gonna say it was a little slower um, it actually crashed. Didn't do that to me yesterday. Uh, I'm going to close a few of the other programs that I have open. But that did not happen yesterday, so some sort of bug. Uh, Family Tree Maker was not properly closed. Blah, blah, blah. One thing Family Tree Maker does that I find annoying. Any program who does this, I find annoying in Windows. Uh, it opens in full screen. So it consumes my entire screen, which I actually think is rather uh, intrusive. Uh, I don't care about backing anything up. So let's try this again. So I know I said in the first episode, I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to judge these programs and um, you know find the program that works best for you it doesn't mean I don't have an opinion that'll slip out every once in a while 
nor would that have kept me from making this my top program. Now, if it crashes again. Now, Family Tree Maker um, in my test was one of the slower programs in importing a GEDCOM file. Not so slow that, you know, you, you see it's done. Um, you know, and in human time, do I care if it takes an extra minute? Well, I probably do, but that's on me, not on them. All right, so 3,173 3, individuals, 886 families. It's reporting sources differently. And you see here, that it, it thinks there's 5,629 sources. Now, if you remember from all the other programs, there were 667 sources in, in the file. So I'm not sure what's going on here. And I need to Russ out, uh, reach out to uh, Russ Worthington. He, he would be able to identify that for me about what, it, what is it actually counting here. Now, I would say it's counting citations, but uh, the first Legacy 9 said there were 15,000 citations. So eh. um, Jan says, is, is it in sp splitting instead of lumping? I, it could be. Um, we'll look at a couple of uh, examples, see if we can figure that out in just a moment. Um, I'm going to close it. Uh, just out of curiosity, since we did it last time, let me see how it handles the underscore military field. It didn't warn us about it. Um, let's see. Yeah, see, it was able... It knew that some programs are using underscore M-I-L-T to mean military and just um, mapped it, um, which is the other best way to go, I think. Um, you know, leave it as is, but put it here or map it to what you know it is. And um, that, so I, I think that's a good thing. Now, if we look over here at sources, um, did it split them? It's got some duplicates here. Um, these are the same. Uh, these are the same. So let's look at the source list here real quick. Now it's going to throw a different number at me. It has identified 627 source groups. What's a source group? Well, um, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, so it's done something interesting here. Um, and I suspect this happened because of field splits. So it's got this one source, uh, that if we look at the title, oh, yeah, it's not handling the, um, HTML characters. Let's, let's pick this one instead. Um, so the source title, if you wonder why I'm bowing my head, I'm trying to look under my microphone. Um, okay. So this one has a space, two space seven, seven, and this one has a two seven, seven. So uh, these are more like yeah, these are more like citations, what I consider citations, than they are sources. Um, list by source title. Uh, can list it by person. That's pretty handy. Um, yeah, so I'm not... Yeah. So I'm not sure it really lost any data. It's obviously counting the records differently. Uh, it's just a little confusing about how it broke things up differently. Now, let's look for, let's see if it's got a log somewhere that we can look at for the import. Um, no. 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 So, uh, again, it... I don't have any insight. The program's not providing me any ins insight to what might have gotten lost. Uh, if anything, maybe nothing got lost. 
Uh, it, just the program's not telling me. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, where did the HTML come from? Good question, Robin. Uh, it came from me. So um, probably in that case, uh, it came from Evidentia. So it, Evidentia allows you to do some formatting of your uh, source citations, but the older versions didn't clean that up when it, it exported it to a GEDCOM file. Um, the current version, I think, does. But um, yeah, so the formatting, it, it, it either came from me or it came from Broderbund. Uh, if I remember correctly, they also tried to do some uh, weird formatting. And um, I, some of that may carry over. So uh, again, uh, you know, a lot of these programs will export data in ways that they would recognize it without regard to how other programs may or may not recognize the same thing. Lewis Kessler says, I bet the large number was the number of citations. That was at 5,000. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Lewis, but Legacy 9 said there were 15,000. So, hey, Jan, stop hitting on us developers. If you didn't have developers, you wouldn't have developments.